Part 15 During breakfast at the Waffle House, Grandpa announced, We're going to the apple picking orchard next. I have an American Legion order to fill for the party. Three dozen apple cider donuts, six apple pies, 24 candy apples, and six jugs of apple cider. That's a big order, Dad said. The lodge already paid for the order. I volunteered to pick it up. With my family here, it'll be a lot easier, Grandpa said. Patty and Jeff can pick some apples off the trees. That should be fun, Grandma said. The orchard rows are marked. We want one bag of Honeycrisp and one bag of Granny Smith. There's a tractor tram ride to the rows of trees. We agreed. At the apple orchard, all went well, except Jeff got in a little trouble. He had climbed up a tree to pick a big apple. Young man, come down from there, please, a guide said. It's not safe for you and not good for the trees. We have a rule that both feet have to be on the ground when picking our apples, okay? Jeff apologized and came right down. He was sorry, too. He was just trying to get the very best apples for Grandma and Grandpa. Our bags were overflowing when we met the family in front of the store. They were weighed and checked out by Grandma. She had also bought some fresh corn and apple butter to send home with us. Dad and Grandpa's cart was loaded when they rolled it to the van. This part's easy, Dad said. Yeah, well, carrying it from the van to the kitchen at the lodge is the harder part, Grandpa said. We'll help, Grandpa. We still have lots of energy. So on the way home, we unpacked the goodies at the lodge. The whole place was decorated for the Halloween party that night. They went all out. When we got back to the house... We had about four hours to get ready for the party. Grandpa practiced his banjo. He was going to play Foggy Mountain Breakdown with a couple of his buddies. Grandma asked Mom if she would be willing to play the Alley Cat song. Mom played it all the time at home. <clears throat> she didn't need much practice. Audrey plays that song just like Joanne Castle used to play a Lawrence Welk. Grandma declared. Mom thanked her and agreed to do it. Jeff and I went upstairs and goofed off for a while. Later, Grandma came up to the sewing room and sat next to our bunk beds. She had a few more stitches to put on the trim of Grandpa's back costume. I saw her thread a needle with that weird metal and wire tool that comes in most sewing kits. I never knew what it was for. You use that thing, Grandma? Sure do. My eyes are not like they used to be. Show me how you did that so fast. Well, instead of trying to put the ragged piece of thread through the tiny eye of the needle, you put the point of the smooth wire through the eye. The wire opens wider than the eye of the needle and I have maybe half an inch hole to thread that needle. How? What do you mean? After you put the thread through the hole that opened with the wire, you just pull the wire back out. It takes the thread with it. Ta-da! You're finished. Let me try that, I said. Sure enough, it seemed like magic to me. Soon it was time for everybody to get their costumes on. Mom and Dad were the mystery couple. When Dad came down, he was Olaf, the snowman from Frozen. He had a white ball cap with big eyes on the brim and a carrot nose. For buttons, Mom had added three large black circles on a white sweatshirt, all this over black slacks. Not too complicated and easy to wear, Mom came into the room next, backwards. She had a green t-shirt on. 
When she turned around, there was a huge Monster University-type eyeball staring at us and smiling. Grandma was a cute black pussycat, and Grandpa came in flapping his bat wings and wrapped them around Grandma as a hug. Jeff and I stuck with our ninja mermaid outfits. Photos were taken, and we were ready to roll.